Dari bayi al rantum kisin jerwood di madrin lah. Modern writing fellas, amazing. We must send the army to Oregi on this moment. That will not be possible. Carolina! Episode 7 of the Rings of Power was great, in fact, so great that I need to retell it in the most epic way possible. Previously, on the Rings of Power, Elrond, Galadriel and company tried to reach Mordor to find Sauron. Many perils along the way, Wraith, broken bridges and dark omens tested their resolve. However, Eddard's army, on their way to Eregion, made them change plans. Elrond teleported back to Linden to ask Gil-galad to do something, and Gil-galad said My name is Jeff that he would do nothing. Which is funny because in season 1 they did not even believe the orcs were alive anymore, and when Numenor charged into battle, what we saw was at most 100 orcs, but now the elves believe Eidar and Sauron's armies are massive. Intel in Middle Earth works in mysterious ways, because Eidar's massive army, including its siege, traveled half of Middle Earth in secret. The city of Eregion only noticed their presence when rocks started flying over their heads. My point being, this show is epic, because every character plays their part what? perfectly well so the plot can happen. Modern writing, fellas, it's great. More previously on Rings of Power, Galadriel found out Halbrand was Sauron and noticed he wanted to craft Rings of Power back in a legend. She left the city without saying anything and never came back with the news. I'm glad she did that because otherwise we wouldn't have a second season. Less previously on Rings of Power. Galadriel and Elrond promised they would sacrifice and do anything to defeat Sauron, even their lives. Because the suffering of a world ruled by Sauron terrifies me more. Defeating Sauron will come first, even before you. Just before the battle, in Aether's tent, Galadriel confesses she always knew Halbrand was back in Eregion, meaning that all of this mess was her fault, as she never did anything about it. Stopping Sauron was her thing, her goal, her entire personality, but yet she did the exact opposite, so his worst enemy did exactly what he wanted while she mindlessly traveled back and forth. He's in Eregion to craft rings that will allow him to dominate my kind. Now, Eidar confesses he knows Halbrand is Sauron, and he wants one of the three elven rings to defeat him, alongside Morgoth crown, a tough sacrifice that could lead to the greater good. And Galadriel is ready to sacrifice a... Uh, whoops, nope, not this. Sauron has no army, no allies, and everyone is his enemy. But he has to win, so let's do an epic battle rather than a logical alliance. I'm sure it will pay off. This means Eider went from sending Halbrand to find information about Sauron and appointing two spies to follow Halbrand, which we never saw, to Eider going full war against Eregion because he knows Halbrand is Sauron. Jumps in logic is a bit of a specialty in this show. Episode 7 Back in Eregion, Celebrimbor and Anatar, now lovers, continue working on the rings. Celebrimbor is trapped in Sauron's mind games. Outside the tower, the orcs are using their long-range, powerful siege to break Eregion's gates across the river. We are about to see an epic water siege, uh, no, wait. They turned the siege towards the mountain, broke the rocks and dammed the river. Yes, science. science! The same orc science they used to ignite Mount Doom. They should build a rocket with all of their knowledge instead. The orcs have even better ideas and engineering, though they are dragging a single heavy siege engine through the mud and the debris, so that single siege could very slowly join individual stones from the wall, while the legend's massive um, 10 warriors fight against them from the top of the wall. Oh no, Mirdania, what will you do? Nothing. In the darkest hour, an elf in a white armor, atop a white horse, sounds the elven horn. Reinforcements have arrived. The orcs stop sieging an agent and gathering from lines, with their commander Eidar standing at the front. Can they hold? Light and darkness, face to face, the battle that would define Middle Earth is happening in front of our eyes. Before the battle, the elven leaders are ready to pump the heart of the soldiers with their valiant words. Oh no, they just not. Charge! To death! Ruin. The elven army is somehow charging from a forest. Black box appears at the middle of the orc army and it reveals itself. It's Galadriel trapped. Keep fighting elves. What? No. They all stop. Their breaks must be epic. 
Now Elrond, Adar and Galadriel are sitting at the same table and Adar proposes the same deal, a tough sacrifice. And given how Galadriel and Elrond already discussed how they were ready to sacrifice anything, no, not that, they will kill each other. But to help Galadriel go free, Elrond fakes a kiss to give her a pin so she can skip. Fakes uh, the kiss? I don't know. The music is telling me otherwise. The music is telling me that this is the kiss of the century. Now we'll see the epic charge, right? The moment we've been waiting for. Pikes clashing against shields and flesh. Bravery is tested as armies meet. The sound of steel and screams fading into the wider battlefield, right? No, even better. A couple of warriors charge into the mud and into the forest. The disjointed battle goes on with about five soldiers on a screen per shot. Elrond's horse dies in battle for some well-earned emotional connection. Oh no! Anyone? The night falls, orcs are dying all over the place. Adar goes to orc funerals while his closest advisors are worried. Adar says he loves his children, but he would love to kill Sauron more, so they must keep dying. That's great for the orcs. Despite what the show is trying to say, this is what we see. They are having the time of their life, they lick the blood, scream, sing, drum and ravish. They act exactly like the war boys in the new Mad Max movies. It wouldn't be the first time Rings of Power is copying its betters. Many that die deserve life. Some that live deserve death. Many that live deserve death. Some that die deserve life. If you choose the quick and easy path, as Vader did, you will become an agent of evil. There are times when one path becomes two, and you must choose. Turn away now, and you can never return to this path. Back in camp, Galadriel escapes with the help of the no personality elf that keeps appearing whenever a character needs rescue. Then Galadriel says they can infiltrate an agent with a super secret and convenient passage she knows. This was a great idea 8 episodes ago, but at least it will surely be an epic journey No, they just appeared inside of a legend. Meanwhile, the orcs keep dying horribly outside the walls. The 10 legend defenders are using fire to burn the orcs alive. Apparently, it wasn't the best idea to leave their trebuchets behind to break the wall with hammers instead. The enemy even loses their main weapon in a single day. A single troll. I'm sorry, I missed something. Previously in episode 7, Elrond teleports from Linden to Kasat Doom and convinces Durin to send an army to help Eregion. No time to teleport to Eregion and help Celebrimbor though, he's just a silly old man. This means Elrond found Adar's army in their way to Eregion and had time to return to Linden, raise an army, go to Kasat Doom, return to Eregion and fight. Believable. The battle's climax. An Asian elf who just mumbled her first words does a heroic sacrifice to destroy the super advanced orc siege engine, who even is Boromir. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Because she was so cool that she used one of the arrows on her body to light up a barrel of modern explosive casually sitting next to the siege engine. No one knew those explosives were there, otherwise the orcs would have used them. But she knew because she was super cool. Emotional connection. No, how terrible! I gil -Galad, one of the greatest elves to ever live, appears casually to fight in the background. The battle looks promising for the elves. In a region, Celebrimbor frees himself from Sauron's mind game. Galadriel finds him, expresses regret, amen, and escapes with the remaining rings, nine rings. Celebrimbor wants her to escape with the rings. For some reason, every elf keeps trusting Galadriel with the most important task, even though she's the primary artificer of this whole mess. Now Celebrimbor leads six out of the ten Eregion warriors to capture Sauron in the tower, and they obviously die. It was a bit too late for that. The sun is rising again. Elrond stands in disarray as he hears Turin is not coming. The remaining elves charge for the greatest battle ever on TV. About 15 elves versus around random number of orcs. All of these important elves should die in one final heroic battle for their honor. Oh, there he goes. Around it is clearly gone, because everyone is fighting to their last breath 
except Elrond. He's too sad because his boyfriend didn't come. Meanwhile, Durin, under the mountain, decided to call back his entire army to deal with his deranged father, because the ring works in mysterious ways, I guess. Durin's army is either 10 people, which would make sense given the show, or he didn't want to go to battle, actually. Previously on Rings of Power, Eddard said he would outmaneuver Elrond and win. We saw several disjointed battles, with a few extras on each scene, and orcs armed like peasants, desperate and dying all over the battlefield. But in the end, the show decided that the elves lost, because orcs had an unlimited number of soldiers. Let's previously on the Rings of Power. Eidar asked Elrond for the Elven Ring, and Elrond replied, foolish of me to have brought it here. And indeed a fool he was, because he had the ring and Eidar took it. This is his storytelling. Say something and show the contrary. Show something and say the contrary. The end. The final episode is just a continuation of this epic battle. This epic battle of nowhere. No logic, no consistent character motivations, no consistent story progression, no lore accuracy, and most importantly, no fun. The best part of the story, or perhaps the least mediocre ones, are the conclusion of Cassad Doom and Numenor plotlines. On Numenor, Elendil escapes as the city is becoming increasingly dangerous due to Alfarazon's coup and his move to stray away from religious traditions. Numenor's part is still notably short and disconnected from the rest of the show, even if Elendil got the member berry sword in one of the scenes, and even if they try to connect the story to Sauron, when Numenor neither recognizes Halbrand as Sauron nor knows he's somewhere in Middle-earth. Numenor's plotline is overall a rushed version of the lore, therefore of a lesser quality. On Casat Doom, Lord Durin finally realizes his mistakes, he has dug too greedily and too deep, and the Balrog found him. In front of his son, the king sacrifices himself to stop the beast for a truly memorable CGI plus a rushed redemption, however Durin's claim to the throne remains uncertain. I add that I genuinely enjoyed Durin's conflict with his father alongside the performances. He knew his father was putting the entire realm at risk, even if he was doing it because he loves the mountain. At the same time, Durin's love for the king was too great so he always chose words and kindness rather than violence to change the situation. And while he reached his father in the end, it was already too late. Oh look this guy, uh, what's his name? Isildur, he's also in the episode. He wants to take his eye candy back to the city and probably make some babies. But Numenor royalty finds the little town and turns them into slaves instead. Now we're back in Eregion. Sauron kills Celebrimbor and... Lord. The name of the franchise is said, but never mind that, because the dialogue in the scene was top tier. Celebrimbor taunted Sauron so he could kill him and end his suffering. The smith mentioned how Sauron, despite believing himself perfect, has been expelled from the heavens forever. Whilst Celebrimbor would rest in peace, he also suggested that he was no more than the shadow of his master Morgoth, a prisoner destined to fail due to his own creations. In the end, evil destroyed itself. So this was easily the best a scene in the show. Now now let's go back to the regular quality. Because the next thing that happens is that some orcs find Sauron and immediately join him. Meanwhile, Galadriel escapes Eregion through the super secret pathway and some refugees follow her. The orcs find her on the other side. The passage turns out to be a giant cave mouth that leads straight to the city, a cave Galadriel was able to find from the battlefield and now orcs are chilling around the entrance. What a massive plot convenience, but that's a given for these cities. What? So the orcs capture Galadriel and take her to Adar, as plot conveniences get worse. Adar, with the ring, is now willing to join forces with Galadriel to defeat Sauron. This was a good idea 8 episodes ago, and it's obviously too late, because Sauron's unnamed powers easily manipulate the peaceful orcs, and they kill Adar in yet another glorious orc orgy of violence. And orc G. Haha. <laughs> Then, Sauron and Galadriel have a final, cringy battle, as if this were Solomon Cain, Constantine, or Van Helsing. Sauron seizes the opportunity to display his off-putting attachment to Galadriel and his twisted idea of love, and he either sounds delusional or the writers absolutely fail to explain his point. Then Galadriel suffers a massive wound, but don't worry guys, she'll be fine after a couple of scenes. Arondir is fine as well. Every main character is fine. Orcs are pretty forgiven. Now it's time for the final battle. Reinforcements arrive through a bridge. The Dwarven army enters a region, shoots a few arrows, and we don't see them again. Truly epic. At least with their help, the elves escape 
and decide to keep fighting another, another day. Lastly, Discount Gandalf repeats the story from the first season, discovers his powers a second time, tells an evil wizard that he's good and saves his friends. Then he's off to a nice singing a scene with Tom Bombadil, something Tolkien fans would appreciate because singing in Tolkien's works is akin to magic and creation. And we're done. I don't really have a conclusion for this, so I will escape through a super secret passage straight to the end. If this is how one billion dollar shows do it, so can I. Light on the budding leaf, you on the feather, wind on the open field, bells on the